Yeah. So this is all about you and your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. And I'm very curious about the doctor <laughs> degree as well. Yeah. So uh, should I be speaking about how it all started? Like, I mean. Yeah, let's from, start from the beginning. Where were you born and raised? Uh, I was born in Mumbai, uh, India. Okay. And um, music has always been an integral part of my life since childhood. Uh, right from humming at the age of two to having actually started singing at the age of three and four, practicing for the church choir. Uh, it was more pronounced when I actually started participating in musicals and uh, skits in school. Mm -hmm. Also representing my school in, in inter-school and interzonal uh, competitions. Tracing uh, the period back to my school days, I have something that I can share with you. So this is how it all started. Oh, I love that. So then I was five, yeah. Five or six. You're five in that photo. Yeah. Wow. So that was at a school recital. Yes, it was. Very uh, cool. In grade one in grade one. A big. I'm sorry. Uh, that was when I was in grade one. So oh, grade one, grade one, grade one. one. Got you. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, so, however, my school life was more academically oriented. Like extracurricular activities were all there in the background. And besides music, there was swimming. Uh, oh. So swimming at the age of 10, when I developed an allergy to chlorine. So eventually that was replaced by lawn tennis. That's another lesson known fact about me. I, I was being trained professionally under uh, the All India Tennis Academy. So um, I represented the state uh, during uh, when I was in grade 7, 8, 9, and 10. So this happened uh, along, yeah, along with my academics. So you, so, the, so you, yeah. were, you, you developed a, an allergy to chlorine. Is that what you said? Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I was a swimmer growing up and I did a uh, water polo. I don't know if that's a big thing out there, but yeah, I was in the swim team since I was in grade seven through the end of high school. What, what, what events did you swim? I swam, what, I'm just curious. Okay, so I was actually being this um, happened when I was in it all started when I was in um, grade one again. Oh, so wow. I, before that, before that, few months before that, yeah. So that was when I had uh, enrolled to a gymkhana and then I, I, I grasped it pretty early, like as, as compared to uh, as compared to people of the belonging to the same age group. So that is when they suggested that I should be trained for these. Uh, um, interstate competitions uh -huh. and that was all that was when it all pro proceeded like I mean I was really interested but then unfortunately I developed this allergy so my yeah. dermatologist suggested that I would have to stop else oh it would worsen and I would I would form maybe like like psoriasis or these uh, sure. other skin allergies so that is oh. how I wind up with all of that <laughs> okay well at least at least you figured that out early on I, I you ever that's the per you're the first person I've ever met that had an allergy to chlorine, but I'm sure it's not. Um, it wasn't actually not really common. Any, like for three years, it went undetected. Really? Yeah, and and I wasn't understanding why. Like I mean, we had few like the, there were these dermatologists who recommended uh, certain uh, steroids applications. Oh, of steroids. Yeah. Oh but my gosh. Then, yeah, but then when there was and um, this doctor who actually like she turned out to be. A Arian Angel and she said, no, it's because of chlorine. So if you see that, everything will be back to normal. Wow. What about, well, now, because now they have all like the salt water pools and all that stuff. I wonder if you could, uh, if that would matter. If that probably wouldn't make much of a difference then, right? You could go in the ocean and everything. Just no, that, that again depends upon the frequency, like how much time, like how much time you spend, the like the contact with your uh, skin. Oh, uh, okay. So like an hour or two won't differ or maybe like twice a week uh, wouldn't cause that much harm. However, uh -huh. again, if, if there's this consistency is there, then it might trigger the problem again. Sure, sure. Interesting. Sorry to go off on this that. side tangent, but <laughs> I to avoid all of that. But sw swimming, yeah. <laughs> okay. So back to grade one, you were, were when you were singing. Continue on. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, they, I I. Yeah, I traced the story back to grade five. That was when, when the swimming thing stopped. Okay. So all of this was going on, all the extracurricular was taking place in the background. Later on, it was replaced by lawn tennis. 
so i started at the age of seven, um, when i was in grade 7 and that again ended when i was in grade 10 because uh, we had our ssc board exams during 10 the 10th uh, board exam or the public exam mm -hmm. that's equivalent to gcse in the uk so it, it determines um, to which college you're going to get in so sure. in the 10th grade i um, secured 96.36 percent that uh, i was the zonal topper top of the school and the topper in the zone so wow. uh, so after that all of my attention funneled towards getting into towards cracking the ct for uh, getting into a medical college so 11th and 12th was again more academically oriented and uh, i can remember listening to more music in the 11th and the 12th rather than singing oh, so okay. i was a passive listener I, I just listened to songs of various genres i appreciated other singers but i wasn't an active participant at that time okay. um so yeah so i cracked the common entrance test and i got into medical college now um Again, going back to those school days, there was this a particular song that I sang uh, during grade eight, mm -hmm. Waka Waka, at, an, at a school event, Waka Waka by Shakira. So um, after that, like there were these students and the teachers and the principal and and like like all the teaching and the non-teaching stuff, whatever whatever event took place in school, they wanted me to come over and to sing that song. Oh. A similar thing happened in medical college during second year. Uh -huh. There were people and friends around me who wanted to listen to more of me. So um, that was when I thought of uploading a, just a random cover to YouTube. It was very much unplanned and unorganized. However, I happened to, we just happened to record it raw over um, mobile and uh, with the background noises on. <laughs> the AC and the fan into play and then we just it was a, a abrupt upload and I I like the approach that we had people were listening to me um in terms of numbers it was pretty good which and cover was that what, what song did you cover it was a cover of uh Air Delay Mushkil. that's a Hindi song Hindi Urdu oh, okay yeah so um like like the movie released today and the second day we had uploaded a cover of that um then yeah then i i did it as a hobby i liked uh the approach that we were getting until one particular um cover that garnered uh, 22 million views on youtube that was when i thought i should be doing more of this so that is how it all started and now and now yeah my, my the academic course is over so I'm doing my internship and I can deviate my time more to music. Wow. Okay. So, so what are you doing for your, what's your doctoral degree in? Yeah, it's, it's BDS. That's a DDS equivalent degree uh, in the US. BDS as in a doctor of dental surgery. Oh, wow. You're going to be a surgeon. Yeah. Uh, after this, I want to pursue maxillofacial surgery. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to bridge a course. Uh, so that will be a dual degree between uh, uh, BDS and MBBS. I'll have to bridge it and then I'll have to do a specialization in maxillofacial surgery. As of now, I'm planning to do that. And after that, I want to do research. <laughs> wow. You are, wow. Okay, that's a lot to unpack there. So not, you're, not only are you a successful singer and you got this huge following on your social media and, and your YouTube channel and everything else, but you're going, you're currently in school to become a surgeon. Yes. <laughs> what kind of surgery? Maxillofacial surgery, that's uh, like in layman terms, I can define it as the head neck surgery of the head neck face. Really? Yeah, yeah. It includes elements of plastic surgery, but however, plastic surgeons are uh, rather eligible to perform uh, surgery over the entire body, whereas maxillofacial surgery is limit limited to the head, neck and face. It's more of a dental specialization rather than uh, a medical specialization. Oh, okay, because I've I'm actually I just got news this morning that I get to have my fourth neck surgery coming up. So I've had I've had two discectomies with a fusion and a liminectomy on my back and my head. I, so, and I have to get another one coming through the front again. So 
That, but I guess you're that wouldn't be up in your wheelhouse, right? The cervical spine. But may I know why it triggered and why did you have to undergo the surgery? Uh, because I had cord compressions on a, a di like a discs were uh, degenerating and they were hitting my spinal cord. So it was uh, like okay. actually compressing my cord. So they had to like pull the disc out, do a fusion. Pull the disc out, do another fusion. Uh, was it positive to do with the, I, I mean, I'm, I'm deviating, but then I would- No, that's uh, fine. That's what this is all about. <laughs> Good. What did you do with your styloid process? I'm sorry? Was there a dis dysfunction with your styloid process? We, they, they don't know. It's something with my cervical spine. They just, they, they, they oh, there's, there's discs that are all like, that were all just not- oh, Specialist are you consulting? Yeah. Uh, what type? Yeah, what type? Uh, it, I, spine, cervical spine. I don't know. Bone okay. joint yeah. spine specialist. <laughs> I hope and pray that you get well soon. And oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. I've been through, like I said, this is going to be my third surgeon. Uh, two different ones in a different state. Now I'm in a new state. Uh, this is going to be the fourth, fourth, fourth time they had to, to open me up. But, um, I, uh, that's, it's, uh, it's a wild industry. I can't imagine, um, being in that. So you, will you be doing, you want to do those type, what type of surgeries would you like to, like, are you trying to perform? Yeah. See the one that you are talking about is it will, um, it's, it's, it's mostly dealt or like in India, it's dealt, uh, by a panel of surgeons. I don't know like how you have been treated over there, but then uh, you will have an ENT surgeon and a maxillofacial surgeon and an anesthetologist and all of them. Yeah, in the sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maxillofacial surgery is one part. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, it's one part, head, neck and face. Up till it's, it's like, till it's extended to your, uh, above your uh, clavicle, it will be included under maxillofacial. Clavicle is the so it will be included under the maxillofacial part of it. Interesting. What made you decide to, uh, now that we're like totally in the weeds here on the, on the medical side, but I'm just curious, what made you want to go to school, uh, to be a surgeon? Um, see, it was uh, in the 10th standard, as I told you, I had secured 96.36 percent. My dad is a mechanical engineer. Um, I could, I had this option of doing engineering as well, but then there was this one thought that I had if I would become an engineer, I wouldn't have a prefix ahead of my name. Whereas I would go into a life, I would become a doctor. Okay, it's Dr. Castino, as you said. Yeah. And if I would be an engineer, I mean, you couldn't call me, you couldn't regard me as engineer Castino. So I felt I should go for, uh, that's, that's how it, I, I proceeded towards going there. But then once I got into, um, medical school it was anatomy that actually interested me interesting okay so you went for the prefix stayed because you enjoyed it yeah <laughs> i i went for the prefix i did not I'm i did kidding. not mind going, <laughs> no i did I, I don't mind studying even like maybe doing arts or or commerce or maybe engineering but but yeah it, it interested me that's why i'm staying and that's why i want to proceed my education yeah i love that school. well at least you'll uh well you have the music thing going right now so let's talk about that so you from from where where where'd you where did your music kind of progress and when she started putting these covers up on youtube when did you start seeing some some sort of success the first cover that i uploaded was um during second year of medical college uh -huh. and after that we had some more covers coming up they were, I can see the, the video and the audio, both were kind of mediocre. I have them. I've not got them. I'm not taking them down from my channel. So it, it, it was a slow process until this uh, one particular track that, that we covered. Um, it was a blend of Urdu, Persian and uh, Arabic in terms of the languages. It was a Sufi ballad cover. That okay. we um, and that uh, crossed 10 million views on YouTube in wow. a, in a uh, span of, I think, 
for four to five months. And after that, uh, we had another few covers uploaded to YouTube. So, I mean, they performed decently. Then there was this one cover um, that we did that was um, Fire on Fire by Sam Smith, a cover of that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That uh, trended in Lebanon at number two. Wow. And it was that song that eventually led to the discovery of the former song Bintedil. It, it, end, like, it was there at 10 million views. Bintedil was at 10 million views. There was a um, steady increase. But as soon as I uploaded Fire on Fire, and when that got discovered in Lebanon, it was Bintetil again that simultaneously got discovered in the Middle East, maybe because of the language. That can be one contributing factor, um, the language and the Sufi uh, style of the video that uh, attracted the viewers over there as compared to uh, Fire on Fire. Uh -huh. That's more Western. So maybe they, could, they, they were familiar to the language of Bintetil. And it was how Bintedil got rediscovered again. Uh, and then that happened in these Middle East countries like uh, Lebanon, Do Doha. It trended at uh, two in Dubai, three in Doha. I may get the numbers wrong. I don't remember. That's yeah, it's, it's all right. That's besides the point. That's awesome. And uh, four in, no, six in Kuwait and uh, six in Kuwait and nine in Qatar and Saudi Arabia at some number. But sure. Yeah. But it, it started doing really well. <laughs> Bottom line is it's doing really well, right? Yeah. That's awesome. So and these are all so is everything you have up right now currently just covers that you just re kind of reimagined? Yeah. In different yeah. languages. Yeah. yeah, because I I there were a lot of verses that I've been writing, but then it's just been planned. We I could not execute it. Uh one was because of um I could not commit to it wholeheartedly because of the medical academics going on sure which is a distinct uh, profession and singing itself is such a huge huge profession so i mean you need to deviate your time and i can't do things half-heartedly so that's why we waited and then uh, during 2020 there were a couple of plans like there were uh, i had distributors and uh, companies reach out to uh, from, from london and we had uh, this from tokyo and we had to deliver these uh, products to them. So um, that's what I did. I did it. I, we made a few originals, but then that was for their companies. When it was uh, to uh, creating our originals, like self uploads, uh, at that time we had all this blueprint ready in front of us. We were just there to execute, and the pandemic started. So oh. all see. And 2020 was in a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to me about that. So you are you're currently in in living in India? Yeah, currently I am. Okay. So talk to me about how you guys were when this all stopped. Because it fascinates me because everyone in the entire world is in the same spot, right? I mean, you would never that would never like in no mind. All of us are sharing the misery. Yeah, it's it's just it's so bizarre. Like you're quarantined in in India, and I'm quarantined in the United States. It's just it fascinates it, it fascinates me, but it's obviously very very disturbing and in, in in the sense of the thing. But it's just it, it's just so wild. Um, tell me about one where you were when everything started closing down and how it like obviously affected you directly. We had our examinations. Oh. Everything was closing down. We had eight theory papers, eight practical examinations, so 16 papers together. And every single, every alternate day, there was the one day in between where we could rest. And 16 days, we were in the hospital writing papers or performing practice. So mm -hmm. that's how it started. And after that, we were at home, quarantined, and quarantined at home till we got our results. And after that, again, internship as well. Wow. So were you guys, so, what was the, were the hospitals being flooded at that time? And, and were, I mean, I'm sure it must have been pretty scary, especially it, if you're in the medical field and that's all kind of happening. In fact, and because, because it was, we were, we were very new to it. Uh, like I remember in the first or the second, second week of lockdown, we had to go to college. Yeah, and we wore these PPE kits. 
and there was not there, there wasn't even an availability of PPE kits and masks. It was wow. that hard. Yeah, but we managed. We the exam got delayed also, but then finally we went and we gave it a try, and then it's over. We are doing an internship. Now. Wow, wow. And then musically, were you able to continue to to come up with covers and and tell me what's the process behind like because when you cover a song, you're covering in a different language, right? Is it different like is it hard to transcribe it into the, a different language and then like the inflections on the on the notes, I'm sure are different when you're singing in a different language versus how the song was originally written. Like tell me a little bit about that. Uh, no, as in for covers, um, as that's what I feel. There's a there's a template. There's a preset template. So you just have to abide by that. It gets pretty easy over there. However, since the um, standards are preset, there's always this constant comparison that's been taking place between the original singer and you. Secondly, you cannot modify it to after a certain extent because then it will be considered as inappropriate. So there's this constant comparison that's been that's taking place. Sure. So, and 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 you you cannot uh, demonstrate your creativity more than a single di dim dimension. What you can do is only with the vocals, some part of the music, and then the video. That's that's just where you you can portray your creativity. That that's it. Oh, uh, okay. And what? So do you, do, you, do you have original songs that you're waiting on releasing? Or, or are you kind of going this route for now and, and trying to see what happens, obviously, with the medical? There are, there are a couple of verses that I have written. Um, we also had the, like, I mean, we were going to execute everything, but we couldn't somehow. So uh, this year, probably, if everything settles down, we should have a couple of people. Maybe by October, November, and December. Yeah. Awesome. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking time to, to hang out with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I do appreciate it. Yeah. I love the picture. I'm, I love that you brought props. That's so cool. Um, I have one more question for you. Do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Um, yeah. Uh, I would say that be true to yourself. Uh, be unique. And there's this section, there's this section in every society, like like uh, a group of malicious people that try to demotivate you. So you shouldn't uh, let yourself be demotivated by them and you shouldn't let them bother you. Uh, they should be left to deal with their own crap. And lastly, uh, listen to more and more of music, regardless of the genre, because the more you listen to, um, like, I mean, there's, there's something to learn from everyone, irrespective of whether you like it or not. Bring me a bad word.